Hi guys, this is Amber with Little King Art. And today I'm gonna show you how to do a basic inverted triangle design on your macrame wall hanging. I find this is one of my most popular designs in my classes. So what you need is a dowel, some hemp or string, and then macrame cord. Uh, you really need an even number. This one has 14 cords. I just happen to have 10 right now. I find that 10 to 14 is good if you're using about five to six millimeters of cord. The thinner the cord, the more uh, cord you'll probably want for your dowel. So I have already pre-cut these you want them to be measured to at least three yards. You can go up to four or even longer. Honestly, depends on how long you want it. You might hear my son in the background. You're gonna take one cord at a time. Take one cord and you're gonna do something called a lark's head knot. So what I've done is I've taken one cord, it's measured to three yards, and I've folded it in half. And it's okay if it's not perfectly in half. We're gonna trim it at the end. So now I folded this cord in half, and now I'm gonna fold this part over my dowel. And then I reach into the loop, grab all of the tail, and pull it through, and that is your lark's head not. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach all of my other cords to this dowel and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to add my last cord. And remember, I just folded it in half. Fold it over my dowel and reach through that loop and grab the tail. All right, now, especially when you're first learning to do macrame, I like to tape my dowel to the table. So you can use blue tape or the green tape. I find that washi tape is not strong enough. So you tape it to your surface. for the design that we're doing today we're gonna make I like to go from left to right and I will make a square knot all the way across now remember you want even number of cords so whether you have 10 12 14 or so on an even number works best because you can have an even number of square knots all the way across the top Now, I love it to make a square knot laying on a table because you can see exactly what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make square knots all the way across the top and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I've got my row of square knots and now we need to join the knots in between. Of course, you could always make rows of square knots and then join later, but for this specific pattern we're doing today, I like to omit these outside too. Now, some people ask me, well, then what are we gonna do with these guys? Don't worry, they'll come back in, but for now, we take the two outside ones and we leave them out. Then we take our next four strands. Notice how it takes two from this knot and two from that knot. So we can make a square knot perfectly in the middle of those two knots. And then you'll grab your next four and make a square knot there. I won't stop the video because I want you to be able to see when you join each and every one. 
Then I grab my next four. Da, 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 da. Grab my next four. And then finally, I'll make one more knot here. Now you could, to make a triangle right now, you could go ahead and omit the next two and do square knots between these guys, but we're not ready to do that yet. For our pattern, we're gonna bring these back down and we're gonna make another one of these. This is, these knots are gonna go down here because what we wanna do is elongate this a little bit. So I'm gonna do this row four times and this row four times. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mimicking that first row of knots. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and then I'll show you what to do in the next row. Okay, I have copied this pattern. I have these five knots here and then four, five and four. I'm gonna do another row of five, another row of four, then one more row of five and one more row of four and then we'll taper it down. So I brought these back in and I will make a row from left to right. Okay, I went ahead and added some length. I have four rows of the five and then four rows of the four knots. Again, if you have a little more cord, you're gonna have some extra knots than I have since I'm just using 10 cords. Now, once you have it at your desired length, We've already started tapering. It's time to taper more. So we wanna go between these knots. So we need to omit these two outside ones. And now we make our row of square knots. Like so. We're gonna start making an inverted triangle ish I guess now we have these three square knots we need to make knots between here so let's omit these and don't worry all of this will come back in then I'll make a square knot here and a square knot here. And finally, we will make one more between those two knots, and then I'm gonna teach you a new knot. Omit these, make a knot in the middle. And at this point, you could call it a day, and this would be perfectly fine wall hanging, but I'm gonna show you something new called the double half hitch. And that's this wrap knot. Everybody loves this one in the class. If you find that the square knot was challenging, you might love this knot. So your two outside cords are your guiding cords. You are going to take your guiding cord and wrap each one of these ropes all the way down to the very middle one here. All of these are gonna wrap around this guiding cord while all of these are gonna wrap around this guiding cord. So I'm gonna move my camera and then I'll show you that knot. Hey guys, I'm gonna show you how to do a double half hitch knot. It's a great way to end your wall hanging, to give it a nice finished look. You have your two guiding cords, you move this in, take this cord, wrap it around, bring it to the left through that hole while I'm holding the guiding cord and pulling this other cord through. Pull my guiding cord while also pointing, pulling this cord. I'm gonna do it one more time. Wrap it around and bring it to the left through that opening. 
and then pull it to the left while I'm pulling this guiding cord to the right. The way the guiding cord works is whatever direction you're holding it, that is the direction all of your knots could form. So you could have it going down, down here. I've seen people do it across or wavy lines. But since we're trying to make this point, we're gonna do that. Feels like the, when you're first starting to tie your shoe, you take your cords, wrap it around the back, and then pull it through this opening here. Pull that to the left while pulling this one to the right. I'm gonna finish up this side and then I'll show you how to do the right side. All right, I've done the left side. To do the right side, you take your guiding cord, move it to the left, and this time, this cord is gonna wrap around and come to the right through this opening. Pull it to the right while I pull my guiding cord to the left. It may feel a little awkward at first because you're so used to doing the other side. Wrap it around, it goes under the back. Pull it through that hole. And while pulling my guiding cord one way, I'm pulling the rope the other way. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll show you how to join the cords. Okay, now it's time to join these guys. These are our two guiding cords. Just pick whichever side you favor. So you take your guiding cord and take the other guiding cord and wrap it around it and pull it this way twice and voila. That is how you do your double half hitch to end your macrame wall hanging or to just add to your wall hanging. Now, once we are done, at this point, you can call it a day, like to untape it. You could always add more down here. You're gonna trim it to your desired length and take your hemp and tie it to your dowels at the desired height that you want it. And voila, ready to hang. So you could leave it long and cut it straight across the bottom. You could also, like I did with this one, cut it at an angle. And that is how you make an inverted triangle wall hanging. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Amber with Little King Art. Please go to littlekingart.com for any of my kits or to sign up for any of my classes and get some patterns. You can also follow me at Little King Art on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much, guys.